Hello and welcome to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Actually, why aren't I in this? Why? Tell me why! The internet went mental yesterday <laughs> over a woman in America that spent $20,000 on getting three boobs. Now, her thing was that she got these three boobs because she wanted to be unattractive to men. She didn't want to go on dates anymore, and she thought this would scare people off. Kind of backfired because every man around the world was just like, boobs? You three boobs, three boobs! Are you talking about boobs? More boobs. I'm keen on this. Well, this has been derailed today because the Tampa International Airport Police Department had a... A baggage that had been stolen. Her mm. baggage had been stolen. Mm. And when they found it, they found a black nylon roller bag. Inside it was a three breast, three breast prosthetic. Pro, prost, shiver me timbers. A three I breast prosthetic. Thank you. Well, they said prosthetic this. That's how you spell it. Oh, okay. Well, that's why it wasn't working for me in autocorrect. <laughs> Basically, she, they found the three boob prosthetic. And it, it is now. Been completely derailed now. The three boob lady. It's huh? valued at five thousand dollars, not twenty. And apparently, her boobs that she has are amazing, but mm. they're not really that big. So the three boob thing that she's got mm-hmm. is probably made by the same people that made the prop for um, uh, what's the movie called, Chang? Uh, Total Recall. Total Recall. Yeah, probably. But even they said it was uh, really perfect. Like the, I knew the it was fake. was perfect. I knew it was fake. And it looked really lifelike, and that's why they were freaked out. But now. Remember yesterday I said I think it could be fake? I didn't completely go in on it. Well, if you want to see the police reports and stuff like that, they're on our Facebook page right now. It's really interesting. Facebook.com forward slash Edge Afternoon. Comment underneath whether or not you fell for that as well, because we want to know how many people actually fell for it, like we did. Mm. But this afternoon, what is a lie? That you have been caught in. Oh, okay. So not one that you fell for. No, one, one that, that you've you been were caught telling. One that you were telling. Call us on 0800 The Edge or text us to 3343. We know a guy that got caught in a lie when he pretended he had a long distance girlfriend. And then it all came out when he had a few drinks that this girlfriend did not exist. He just told us that he made all. her up. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been caught out in one, Clint? I don't think so. I wouldn't like to think that I was telling too serious a lie. Mm. What? Mm. What do you think I'm lying about? No, I'm just kidding. Nothing. I just wanted to see if you'd crack. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. Hey, Matt, tell us, what is the lie that you've been caught out in? Oh, well, when I first started dating my fiance, I said I could speak Spanish. And could I you? I used to talk like a bit of gibberish to my son. <laughs> yeah. And um, it kind of sounded like Spanish. So she's like, oh, can you speak Spanish? I'll like, yeah, yeah. And I studied it. I can speak fluent Spanish. Yeah. Um, and, it- and then it came out. When we're drinking at a bar, someone was Spanish there. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then they started talking to me, <laughs> and I tried to, you know, pretend that I could speak, and, yeah, it slammed one of my face. Can you please really? do some of your fake Spanish for us right now, Matt? We need to hear how good it sounds. Oh, it doesn't sound that good, to be honest. Come but, um, on! Give us a go, give us a go. Just speak a bit of Spanish like, to us. El Estón Telebontos. Oh. Oh. Just random gibberish like that. To be honest, oh, to be honest, be honest it's not bad. I would have fallen not, for I that. thought you were just going to go, taco, taco, taco. But that was actually pretty good. I really, I actually fell for that, Matt. So we're really sorry you got caught out on that one. <laughs> it seems to be guys, though, that are getting caught out in these yeah. lies. We've also got Craig on 0800 The Edge. What was your lie? Oh, I'm sure I'm not the only guy who's ever said it, but I told her I'm only going to put the tip in. No! Oh, <laughs> Craig, get out of here! Oh, my God. I am so sorry about that. That is... Uh, oh. Okay. Play a song! Play a song! No, it's cool. It quits there. We're okay. going to move on after this. Oh, God. Guy, Sharon and Clint on The Edge. Yesterday was a very hard day for me. <sighs> I got home from work. You can do it. <laughs> Where are my mice going? <laughs> Casey Braxton had died on Home and Away. It was a bit. If you, if you didn't watch the episode, here's, here's a little bit of what happened. I don't want to lose you again, Brax. I'm sure you can understand. <laughs> No, no, Casey. No, Casey. 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 No, Casey. Casey. Maybe no. Oh, sorry, Dad. I don't like seeing Brax upset. He's my favourite. So I thought I would take this time today to pay respects to one of <laughs> the greatest <laughs> TV characters in Australian soap history. So I've uh, prepared a funeral version of the Home and Away theme song to play as I read a eulogy for Casey Braxton. 
Today, we are here, friends, to remember our friend, Casey Braxton. Casey came into our lives with his real hot brothers, Brax and Heath. And then he was later joined by his even hot brother, Kyle. <laughs> Sorry, I said to think about Kyle for a couple of seconds. This is weird. He made our days of being at work so much better when we'd get home. And he'd strip off to his board shorts and go for a surf in Summer Bay Beach with the sun glistening off his sweet, sweet, perfect, sweet body. He was a little bit naughty, but we loved that about Casey. We even forgave him for that horrible tattoo he got after he accidentally killed his dad. What? Casey. Start the song again. Such. So, Casey, we will never forget you. You will live on forever through our relentless Google imaging of Casey Braxton shirtless and Casey Braxton pretty much naked and Braxton brothers and river boys. We will look after your brothers, especially Brax. The things that I do to him while I look after him and my thoughts will definitely keep him happy for a okay. long time. All right, keep it above the surf, mate. R.I.P. Casey Braxton. R.I.P. <laughs> Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. I hate you, and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares dogs love shack. Love. Oh, it was nice to hear Guy's voice again for a little bit. He's on Aww. holiday at the moment, so he's not in the love shack with us at the moment. But we do have plenty of questions for you, Shares dog. Yep, if you've got one, fire it through on three three four three, or call us on oh eight hundred the edge. Uh, Shares dog, I've been with my partner for twelve years. He just proposed, but my parents hate him. How do I tell them? If your dad is really traditional. You could do the old sneaky, get him to kind of grease up to the parents by asking your dad anyway and pretending he hasn't proposed. Oh, after the fact, yeah. Yeah, and then he'll be like, oh, that that Graham, he's not that bad. Or you're just going to bite the bullet and tell them, you've been together 12 years, it's obviously never going to get any better, and I highly doubt they'll disown you because you're marrying, you know, someone they don't like. Shaz Dog, I've just broken up with my boyfriend. What's the best breakup album to listen to? Morrissey, Jag a Little Pill, every single time. It is the best from start to finish, every really? single Still, emotion. It's from the yeah. 90s. Doesn't matter. It is honestly the best album, start to finish. Every sort of breakup is covered in it. Shaz Dog, my hubby is such a man. There's not. This is not my hubby. I'm reading out the, the text messages. It's definitely your hubby. Um, my hubby is such a man. There is not a romantic bone in his body. He never cooks, but he often comments on my cooking. Um, how do I get him to realise how useless he is? Hmm... This is a tough one. It's really hard because when you try to talk to people about it, you get quite emotional. It ends up being one of those arguments where your voice tends to go real high-pitched, like where only the dog can then hear you. <laughs> you need to sit down and rationally spell it out for him what you need for him. And if he's never cooking, then just say, look, it's too much for me. I need you to alternate cooking with me. And then on his night, just don't cook. Make sure that he does it. If he doesn't cook, he doesn't get fed. Well, you're going to be pretty hungry. What if you've got kids? Well, he's obviously going to have to cook for his kids. All right. Yeah, good point. Um, Another thing, and I know I've seen this a million times, but go and do like a couple of couples counselling sessions. They're actually really fascinating, and they make your relationship stronger because you learn different ways of doing things, and you'll be able to open up with somebody mediating what's going on. No, no, couples counselling. Shazdog, they've got the love shack. Well, no, I can't, I, I can't mediate it for you with one question. Okay, last one. I'm a single girl, and people think that I dress real sluzzy. Aww. <laughs> How do I still look hot, um, but dress a little bit more classy? Hmm. I think it's down to your, like, it, it's a bit of everything. It depends on the makeup that you wear. You don't want to, like, go too orange or anything like that. Hmm. My mum always said to me, you got to pick one. When you're dressing up, you want to look hot, but you still want to look classy, you got to pick one. Are you going to go the cleave or are you going to go the legs? So if you're going to go cleave, then you wear a little bit longer in the legs, and if you're going the legs, then you wear a higher top. I reckon it's like driving. What do you mean? Dress to the conditions, and when they change, reduce your yes. cleavage. Don't be the person that turns up in a bodycon dress, high stiletto heels, with your boobs and your bum out at a concert. Like... Oh, no, sensibly. That's what you do do at the concert. No! Don't do that for work. You're going to hurt yourself if you wear that at a concert. Hi, I love you, and I bought you this sweet treadmill. 
I hate you and I'm leaving you. What am I doing wrong? Shares Dogs Love Shack. Love. Oh. This is where resident love expert and relationship... Um, is it crazy? Are we calling you crazy? Um, who are you calling crazy? Well, you, you came up with the concept. Well, I used to be crazy, but there I am okay. living proof that us crazy people can find Reformed love Reformed crazy. Yeah. Um, offers her um, advice from her years of experience in the Love Shack to you. First up on 0800 The Edge, we've got Hannah. What's your question? Oh, hi. Oh, this is weird. I didn't actually think I'd get through. Oh, well, you have. So you better have a problem. You better have, you better have a good problem. <laughs> no, I do. Okay, um, good. I'm almost 22, and I want to know how you can meet people. The bar and the club scene is not my thing. Whereabouts do you work? Do you work somewhere social with people you're at the same age? Um, I work in a jewellery store. Okay. Well, that th- do you, is so it in a all mall- the men that come in are not single. Is no, it, exactly. Is the jewellery store in a mall, Hannah? Yeah. Okay, so this is what you... Food gotta, court. I'm always, I, <laughs> I really hope that my parents are listening right now. Because uh, the, the the term I'm going to use makes me sound way slothier than I am. I've always been one of the like a screw the crewer. Like <laughs> I've been the person that dates the people at work. And in malls, it's like a candy By store. That's how you went out with Chang. <laughs> I didn't go out with Chang. Working in a in a mall, Hannah, is honestly like a candy store. You just need to open your eyes and look in those stores, and you'll find there are a lot of hot babes in there. And then you just got to casually go in, look at their stuff, and be like, oh, "Have you guys been busy today?" That was my line for picking up boys in malls. <laughs> so go and have a look around your complex. I it's not actually, you. it's not actually bad advice from you. Especially in the men's stores, the surf stores. Yeah, you and can the choose it. if you if you like a skatey guy, go to Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you like a um, uh, a guy who likes oh, trolleys, go oh, to Food Town. I I uh, I met two super hot guys in Vodafone stores. So there you go. There, there's some stores to check out in your mall, Hannah, and see if you have any luck there. Cool. Good. Thank you. You sound scared, but trust me, it'll work. Trust me. Brad, what's your question? Brad. Oh, hi there. Oh, hello. Yeah. What's your question, Brad? Okay, um, I've had not marriage for the last couple of years, and uh, I've been seeing this young lady, and I've really fallen for her. But my Aww. wife has told me, uh, yeah, my wife's told me no more open marriage, so. What? Okay, wait, hang on a second. You were in an open marriage, and then you started yep. seeing this girl. Well, this but, is juicy. But then you started, like, dating her, and you've fallen in love with the mistress kind of thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly wow. that. Oh, this is why I would never want an open relationship. There are way cooler girls out there than me. So do you um, do you want to keep both? <laughs> do you want to keep both, or do you want to keep the other one? It's been great for the last couple of years. Um... There isn't a woman that's that's uh, affected me like uh, like this one has. Yeah, and, the mistress uh, or the I, wife. The mistress. Okay. Right. Yeah, she's she's fantastic. Well, Brad, I think you've answered your own question of who you're choosing in this no, situation. No, I don't know what the question was. What is your question is for Shasta? Are you trying to decide well, if you stay with the wife or well, the, the? Yeah, the question is the open marriage is finished, so I have to choose. I think you've made. I think, I think you've, you've made, made your decision your for you. Decision. Although I feel really terrible for your wife, I think that you've made your decision already. Okay, thanks but, for your help. But you should um, write a pros and cons list, maybe, or like go and talk to someone about it because you need to be really, really sure it's not yeah. a grass is greener on the other side situation. I think you're right. I have been thinking about it long and hard for the last few months. And, yeah. Uh, yeah I've got to make a choice. Do a list, babes. Do a list. Lists Ch- help everybody. Thank you, Brad. Chang is laughing his head off at long and hard. Um, <laughs> the oh, open uh, marriage concept is a very interesting one, eh? How no. Well, uh, I was going to say it works for some people, but it hasn't even worked for Brad, no, and he had one. I could never, like, mm, no way. Yeah. No way. My husband's had a, had enough fun times at the theme park. <laughs> He's had enough for his So you're punishing him, you're like, here. you're mine now? Yeah, definitely. Guys, Sharon and Get Clint. Out. Well, that was a very interesting episode of The Love Shack. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You're running out of time to come to the Bermuda Triangle with us, by the way. We'll tell you more about that in a minute. Was Brad my husband with a fake name? <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. Okay, Guy Williams is away at the moment, so we've brought in a dead ringer for him, Chang. A dead ringer, Chang. When you're ready, please yep. do the big Guy Sharon and Clint and style m- introduction. Make it professional. And okay. Get his name and, right. And everybody's still gonna do the thing in the, at the place. And the, and the bit. Yeah. And the thing. Okay. Yeah. Go, Chang. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio Andy Grammer. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, Andy. Thank you, Chang. You I can mean, go now. Thank you. That was really good. Now get out. <laughs> that was you were really good at that too. Wait, well, I feel like we nailed it. You and, did, Andy. Can you understand us? I can. I know we were joking. We got in here. I, I can. <sighs> I said to Andy when he got here, I said, "Just have a seat. We're going to have a yarn to you for a bit." And he goes, "Okay, so uh, uh, a yarn to you." 
as a talk? <laughs> that, and yarn. But that's a, yarn. Like, like a ball of yarn? It still explains to me. I don't yeah. understand. Well, it's just... Uh, a yarn goes on forever, so does a ball of yarn. Okay, yeah. I don't know. That's just what I I'm guess gonna make that is, up. I think you just found the origins of the word yarn there. Totally. Yeah. See, I'm wow. intelligent. I'm intelligent. So, what what have been the weirdest things that you've heard in New Zealand so far that you've been like, huh? Well, what's funny is that yawn. It sounds like yawn to me, which is like, oh. oh. So like, yeah, we're gonna have a nice lazy well, time we, with you right now. We didn't mm. want to tell you, yeah. but the other thing I've heard, even just today, it didn't happen in Australia so much, but everybody's been saying sweet as. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which makes me feel like I have a nice butt. Yeah, well... They're like sweet ass. Stand up, then. Let's have a look. Then I- <laughs> no, honestly. It's, it's sweet ass is something that we say all the time. Like, mm-hmm. oh, nah. It, it's confusing because people will say, yeah, nah, sweet ass. And you're like, well, what does that even mean? Because you've said yes, you said no, and then you've said it's okay. But I'm into it. Has anyone taken the piss out of you yet? Sure, all, t- all day long. Yeah? yeah. Aww. You look like a deer between the headlights right I'm now. I'm just trying to hang on with you guys right now. <laughs> there's yarn. There's a lot going on. Yeah, so yeah. much. So much. It's a, it's a baptism of fire. Hey, welcome back. It's good to see you again. It's so good to be here. I don't mean this in a rude way, but where have you been for the last few years? I know, right? Yeah. Uh, traveling around. Got to go play a lot, of, a lot of all over the world, a lot, a lot around the U.S. Yeah. And then writing for this next album. Mm-hmm. It, it's out now, yeah. Awesome. And back home, you've nailed the New Zealand audience because it's, you know, around the ITM Cup, our rugby tournament here. <laughs> So, so awesome! How did, how did my that come My brother's really about? proud of me. My brother plays rugby. I was going to say, have you ever seen or played a game of rugby before? I have. I've seen a lot of it, mm-hmm. uh, and my brother played it, so I kind of grew up around it. Can you name wow. an All Black? An All Black? Yeah. Oh, dude, he was on my water bottle. What was his name? Yes. I forget. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Richie McCoy. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yes. That was cool. He, Richie McCoy is pretty much Jesus of New Zealand. He's he, the biggest guy. He is. He is. Well, who's every the biggest? Every time he goes somewhere, everyone just yeah. bows. Who's the him. most important athlete in the states? Uh, probably LeBron James. He's. He is. He's our LeBron James. He's your LeBron. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If Jay Z and Kanye with lived, more hair, if, more. <laughs> yeah, a lot more hair. He's shorter as well. Yeah. Yeah, but if Jay Z and Kanye lived in New Zealand, they'd rap about Richie. I bet they would. Yeah. He, he's a legend. Now you're going to be playing a show tonight with. American authors and also Benny Tippene. Yeah. Have you checked out any of Benny's stuff yet? I haven't, but I, I've been hearing from a lot of people. It's amazing. He did really well in the X Factor, right? Yeah. Yeah. He did. He was. He luckily came third, which is the luckiest place to come in. I know. X it's Factor so show. scary if you win those things. It's like yeah. seems like that doesn't work out. It's a curse. He's a weird one though, and I again, I don't mean this in a in a rude way. Don't think of him as just an X Factor con- contestant. Sure, though, no, you know, of course, like yeah. he is, and I don't and I don't mean to be rude about everybody who's ever been on X Factor before. He's an amazing musician and yeah. singer and songwriter, and I think between him. And you and the American authors should guy. be a pretty good bill. It's going to be a cool show. Yeah, we're psyched. Um, you're going to do a song for us this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. You're going to do the um, Guy Sharon and Clint yet to be named cover challenge. Well, it's not yet to be named. It's being named. It's just called the cover challenge. Yeah, is it, is it, it, now, when you say challenge, does somebody win this? No, um, well, pretty much it's a challenge that we. It's like set. one of those games that no one wins. Well, we're setting you the challenge. Yeah, we're setting you the challenge okay. to do it. So yeah. so far, Ed Sheeran he learned Royals by Lord in like two minutes. We've had a whole lot of New Zealand musicians doing it. Nice. And I I think you're our second international to take on the cover challenge. Okay, cool. What did Benny do? Benny did, um, did Paloma Faith. Yes, Only Love Can Hurt Like This. Yeah, nice. he did that about two weeks ago. So, uh, what song will you be performing for us this afternoon? I'm going to rock some thrift shop for you guys. Damn! Ooh. Give a chance here. This is gonna be, are you going to do the rapping as well? You know it. Oh, shivers. I'm excited. Shivers. Shivers. <laughs> shivers, guys. <laughs> Shut up. I'm, I must be so annoying. No, I'm, not, I'm the worst. It's because I'm trying not to swear because I'm trying to improve myself. So Got I'm it. just. Got been yeah, bringing yeah. out the most mum slang ever this okay. week. So I'm like, shivers, oh, guys. Shiver me timbers. <laughs> shivers. Shivers. All right, well, let's do the let's Guy do Sharon and Clint cover challenge with Andy Grammer doing Macklemore and Ryan Lewis's Thrift Show. Right, here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Mm-mm-mm. I said, I'm an apostle tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. I'm hunting, looking for a come up. Freaking awesome, awesome. I'm on the pop song tag. Only got twenty dollars in my pocket. I'm hunting, looking for a come up. This is freaking awesome, awesome. Walk up to the club like, what up? I got a big cuckoo. So pulled about some from the thrift shop. Ice in the fringe is so damn frosty. The people like, damn, that's a cold ass honky. Rolling in hella deep, headed to the mezzanine, dressing all pink, set my gator shoes. Green draped in the leopard mint girl standing next to me. I should have watched this. Smells like R. Kelly sheets. 
do is 99 cents, yo. Copping and watching about to go and get some compliments. Passing the bundles, moccasins, someone else has been walking in. Me and Grungy, freaky man, I'm stunting and flossing and saving my money. And I'm hella happy that's a bargain. I'ma take your grandpa style, I'ma take your grandpa style. For real, ask your grandpa, can I have his hammer down? For Lord jumpsuit with some high slippers. Doobie brown leather jacket that I found digging. Yo, they had a broken keyboard, I bought a broken keyboard. Ski blanket, then I bought a knee board. My ace man, my mellow John Wayne ain't got nothing on my French game. Hell no, I can take some pro wings, make them cool sell those. I said make them cool sell those. The sneaker heads be like, yo, he got the Velcro, I'm in the pops on tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. I'm hunting, looking for a come up. This is freaking awesome, awesome. I'm in the pops on tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. I'm hunting, looking for a That is Andy Grammer taking on the Guy Sharon and Clint yet to be named cover challenge doing Thrift Shop by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. I just need to, I just need to talk to Clint. Was that, was that the best one? It might, it might have been the... <laughs> like I said there was no winners. No, no, no. Don't change it now. No, this, I actually... Just come, just come over. Yeah. Like, you know how Ed Sheeran did Little Royals? Yeah, and so he's like, right. It's like Ed Sheeran and stuff. That's pretty like, good. That's, that was kind of better. Yeah, it sounded like that was better. <laughs> I think that might have been the best one we've ever had. We're not actually so saying that to kiss your ass, and you can listen back to any of our Guy Show and Click cover challenges. We've never ever given someone the best title, but that That's for awesome. us was the best cover challenge so far. Thank You're you amazing. so freaking much. If I you, love you guys. If you wanted a reason to go along to the show tonight, that's it right there. Come hang out, guys. It's going to be great. Andy Graham is going to be at the Power Station tonight um, with the, all our American authors, with Benny T. Benny, there's still some tickets available through our website, theedge.co.nz. Andy Graham, awesome. everybody. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. Holy crap! Our text text machine has literally exploded. If Guy was here, he would say that the text machine is blowing up. It's not. That's not even a, a good enough word for what has happened right now. I have never ever seen this reaction to an acoustic performance before. Mm. We just had Andy Grammer in here, who sings that song "Back Home." Also sings "Keep Your Head Up." Mm. He's doing a show in Auckland tonight at the Power Station, Come on, and. He just absolutely made Thrift Shop by Max Moy and Ryan Lewis his bitch. Mm. And we have had so many texts. If you want to download it, go to our podcast right now. We're going to put a link on our Facebook page. We've done a special podcast just of that. And uh, you can click the link and download it to your phone there. Yeah. Victoria, you just heard Andy Grammer's cover challenge. What did you think of his Thrift Shop version? Oh, my God. I actually thought it was 100% better than the original. It wow. was jazzy, it was lively, and it was, it was absolutely... Absolutely amazing, 100% better, I have to say. <laughs> are, you, are you in Auckland? You should definitely head along to a show at the Power Station tonight. I'm not. I'm in Christchurch. Oh. I would totally okay. have loved to have come, hey, though. We've got some good news for you. Chang's just grabbed that, and he's put it up as a um, special podcast download. So if you've got an iPhone or an iPod or even just iTunes on your computer, um, look yeah. up Guy, Sharon, and Clint, and you can download that one. <coughs> <clears throat> that he just did for free. Excuse me, you get that for free. Awesome. It's totally, I'm, I'm going to go straight now. Yay! Cool. Thanks, Victoria. Hone, what do you think of Andy Grammer's cover challenge? Oh, mate, I'm going to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, it was flipping mean as <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought that you were about to rip into him just then. Oh, nah, nah, no way. But the thing is, um. I'm a bit embarrassed about this. I don't actually know who... Uh... Andy Grammer. Oh, yeah, is, that, is that Stink? No, 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 that's fine. No, that's, that's fine. fine. He, um, he, the, the thing about him is he had that one song on the edge about four years ago called Keep Your Head Up. And then he's been away for ages, and that's what we talked to him about. And he's got a song now called Back Home, um, which is on the ITM Cup ads. But that's sweet. We, just, he, we know he's a great performer, so we wanted to get him in to do that song. So you know, oh, he was mean as, eh? Yeah. Well, you've got to go look him up now because he may be your new favourite, Honey. Oh, you guys are awesome. Keep up your work. Too, Honey, you're awesome. And sorry about the election, mate. Sorry you lost your um your multi party seat. Oh no, you know, too true. But you know, partnering with you know Kim was a bit bit of a hard <laughs> thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your call, babes. Have a good day. Got up. See ya. Um, the texts are still flooding in. You guys are so nice. So many compliments uh, for Andy. And if you want to get that, the song is free on our podcast at the moment. And Sharon's putting the link to get it on the Guy, Sharon, and Clint Facebook page. It's there right now, so go it's click it. Now. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. What do we 
actually she's supposed to be doing here? Um, what we're doing now... She left my sheet blank. That yeah, makes me nervous. That's my new idea. I didn't want the chance for you to say, no, we're not doing that. What I need... Yeah, that's right. You hear that? This guy. Where's the pants? Well, we're doing... My pants are rolled so tight right Well, we're now. doing the bit, aren't we? So it's so tight that... I need okay. someone to call 0800 The Edge right now who wants to play a game, who wants to play a new game show. There'll be a prize. I forgot to get a prize. Does this involve me having to get naked? No, you don't have to. You can. You're welcome to do it while you're naked no. if you want. No. Um, but if you want to play... Call us now on 0800 The Edge. Wait, are we playing What's in Sharon's Mouth? No. Okay, what is the game? It's a new game called Dead or Not Dead. And this is where I give you names of people, and you mm-hmm. have to tell me whether they're dead or not dead. And if you get three of them correct, then you win the game. Whoa, what a great idea, Clint! Whoa! Sounds so good. Ange, you're on the phone. Uh, hello, Angie. Hello. Hello. And Sorry I called you Ange. Uh, Shane right. was still typing your name in there. Now, Angie, you want to play Clint's amazing new show, show Dead or Not Dead? Yep. Do you understand how it works? Yep. Okay, good. Question number one in the inaugural game of Dead or Not Dead. The guy from Stargate SG-1 that had the gold thing on his forehead um, and very high cheekbones, uh, he was a bald brown guy, is he dead or not dead? Dead. Oh, no. Uh... We've got our first loser in Dead or oh, Not Dead. Angie, <laughs> your time on this show is dead. Do we have more? Do we have uh, more uh, contestants? Until next time. Thanks, Angie. Uh, you, do you want a boy or a girl? Um, a give choice. me a boy. Give me a boy. Okay, Cam, welcome to Dead or Not Dead. Are you ready to play? Uh, yeah, what do you do? Uh, you just tell me if the person I tell you is dead or not okay. dead. The person, yeah. I'm, the first person, we haven't got past question number one yet. The guy from Stargate SG-1 that had the gold thing on his forehead. Is he dead or not dead? Uh, not dead. Hey! <laughs> How did you get that one? Um, uh, I just know everything. Yeah, good. All right, question number two. And, and the fact that Angie just got it wrong. Question number two. Yeah, I had my radio off, though, so. <laughs> Mr. T. Skill. Mr. T, is he dead oh, he's or alive. not dead? He's uh, not dead. He's what? He's not dead. Whoa! Whoa! That's two, from, two out of three so far. We've got one more question in dead or not dead. Then make it easy. The genie. The genie from I Dream of Genie. That Ooh. show from the 60s. Is the genie from I Dream of Genie dead or not dead? I know the genie from Aladdin is dead. Oh, um, R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to say dead, I guess. Is that your final answer? Um, should it be? I can't help you with dead or not dead. Okay, it's decide. my final it, answer. Yep, yep. It's your final dead. answer. Oh. Oh, Cam, you were so close at making this game end, but you were oh, wrong. Sorry. Do we have another contestant? We've got to end we're, the we're, game. We've got one more. Okay, Letitia, are you ready to play Dead or Undead or Dead or Not Dead? Dead or Not Dead. Dead or Not Dead. Okay, go. Letitia. Hello. Is the genie from I Dream of Genie dead or not dead? Not dead. Yay! Letitia, her name is Maureen McCormick. She's fifth. Uh, she's eighty-three. And oh no, her name is Barbara Jean Moorhead. That was the bonus question that I had down there. She's eighty-three. She's still alive. You win, dead or not dead. She doesn't sound very excited. Uh, are you excited about that, Letitia? <laughs> yeah, you won. <laughs> Letitia, you're you're the, you're the inaugural dead or not dead champion. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel as well. No worries. Hey, I've got a, I've got a, no, I've got one. I've got one. I've got one. Hmm. Dead or not dead? Is it dead? What? The game. Oh, piss off! It was you a good game. Guy Sharon and Clint on the bloody edge. Shang's here. <laughs> Why do you have to always play this music? Because this is a feature where, uh, if, you've, if you're new to the show, by the way, Chang is our producer. I am Asian. Chang is a Chinese. And Hello. this is a segment <laughs> where Chang brings news from the Chinese community, and we call it Chinese News. We, yeah! We are spreading our wings today. We're going to Singapore. Okay. Mm. Um, have you ever heard of the saying, stop playing with your food? Yes. Hang on. Excuse my global ignorance here. Mm-hmm. Singapore's not part of China. Well, it's Ch- Chinese people live there. Okay. Yeah, Asian. Majority okay. Asian people. Okay, yeah. sorry. Okay, okay. okay. So th- okay, there's, okay, okay, okay. Th- there's this mother of two mm-hmm. has created cartoon characters out of the lunch boxes for her kids. 
So the, for, the, for some of the food Like the sushi I'll show you a photo This is very visual We'll post it on our Facebook page Where you can have a look It's very very cool She had made Hello Kitty Out of the lunch Look at that It's really Aww. She even makes Spongebob square pants Oh so she made Hello Kitty sandwiches Yeah Oh that's so cute And then there's a Spider-Man Like how how can you actually eat the food which actually looks like cartoon characters? Probably because you're slips hungry, and if your mum does it every day, you don't appreciate mm. it after a while. And even if they do look like really good cartoon characters, um, people got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you're so racist, Clint. No, I just and like the way what? you say characters. Do you know what Andy Grammer told Clint off for of being racist to Chang when he was here? <laughs> And I said, I'm not going to be a show because he was the racist one. Yeah, his, his, his manager and, and Andy Graham were, were really offended by Clint's racist remarks to Chang. Not racist, just... Just what? Just what is him. it? Just, we're just... See, the, it wouldn't be just the same joshing. if I did it to the just, white people. Do, do, do it. Well, do, okay, it. Do, do it. Do me. No, do I, don't, it. I, don't, I don't want to do, do it. Do Clint's voice. Hello, I'm Clint. <laughs> Not very good. <laughs> do my voice then. Do mine. Hello, I'm Sharon. That's well, even deeper than mine. <laughs> Chan, got to admit to you, mate, um, your news this week, not that good for radio. It's pictures of cool lunches. It'll be good on each TV, though. Why don't you go try and get on there? Screw you guys. <laughs> Hi, Sharon and Clint. Itch. Welcome into a safe place. A place where you can be honest. A place where you can just get rid of those burdens on your shoulders so you no longer have to hide things from your friends and family. This is the musical Secret Shame Hall of Fame. Mm. This is when you get to tell us about all that music that you listen to when nobody else is listening. Like, for example, on my way to work today, I listened to Life Ain't Easy by Cleopatra. Oh, Cleopatra coming at you. Yeah, the, it was their second single, Life Ain't Easy. I think you're the poster girl for... Um, gonna change. Ha- having like, bad song taste that you still hang on to? 90s pop. Yeah. Anything 90s Sorry, pop, bad still was, hanging bad on to was it. Bad was a negative still way Still hanging on to it. it. Um, I guess I could, I could come in here. Mm-hmm. What do you got? Hi, uh, my name's Clint. I'm from Rotorua, and I was raised on a solid diet of uh, Metallica Um and yesterday I admitted to the whole country, live on air, that I'm a that I'm a fan of the new um, Jonas Brothers song by Nick Jonas. That is very uh, not what I expected from a road or a bogan you. like you. Do you feel better though? I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulder. Now put it in a bubble and blow it away. Hallelujah. We want to know what yours are. Join the Musical Secret Shame Hall of Fame Fe- on 0800 The Edge Now or text us to 3343. It feels good. Welcome, Rhea. You're in a safe place right now. <laughs> what would you like to admit to? <laughs> musical Secret I, Shame Hall of Fame, what is it? I absolutely love Five Seconds of Summer and all my friends and most of the time me are metalheads. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to admit to this one as well, especially when they brought out Don't Stop. That was the song that won me over. But she looked so perfect, was it, for me, man. I, I was, humming, was humming it mm. one day and I was like, what's that? I was like, oh, it's nothing. Oh, it's, it's um, Pantera. It's, uh, it's one of their real <laughs> B-side tracks. You wouldn't know it. Well, it it's one of Slipknot's... Um, just acoustic track. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rio, you're in a safe place right now, so blow it in a bu- put it in a bubble and blow it away. <laughs> and don't and don't stop God. doing do what it. you're doing. Do it, do it, yeah. Don't stop. She looks so perfect standing there. Damn yeah. straight, girl. Damn straight. Thank you so much for trusting us with this information. Zach is up next. What is your musical secret shame hall of fame? Uh, oh. You know about 10 years ago, that really dumb uh, Crazy Frog? Oh, Oh, yeah. Bam, bam. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm truly ashamed because I do still look at it it now and still like it, even though it's an irritating piece of crap. You're not still listening to Crazy Frog, eh? Are you? Oh, sorry, we're not meant to judge you. We've (laughs) had a couple of people text in saying that song, and also Schnappy. Do you remember that song? Schnee, schnappy, 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 schnappy. But he was so cute. He was so cute. He's so cute and adorable, but Mm. I still have that CD in my CD player at home. Do you feel better now that you've got that out in the open, Zach? No, I still feel shame. Oh, (laughs) don't feel shame. Don't feel shame. Willow, what is it for you? Um, I'm actually not embarrassed about my band, but everyone tells me that I should be. Yeah. Yeah. the Vinger Boys. (gasps) <gasps> Girl! The no, Vinger Boys. Nothing about bit. the Vinger Boys. No, no, there is nothing. We listened to that when we went for our red card party in Fiji. Boom, boom, boom came on in a bar. Everyone in the oh bar got up and sang. Yeah, that's a song, right? It's such a yeah, good song. You're always telling me I should be embarrassed, and I'm not even ashamed. <laughs> the, Don't be ashamed on that one, Willow. Here's the true test. <laughs> Aqua's coming to the country this year. If Finger Boys came, would you buy concerts? Would you go, and would you buy a T-shirt? Um, For sure. Wow. my childhood... 
favourite band, whatever they are. Yeah, <laughs> listen, all right. I'm pretty sure you and I are soulmates, so <laughs> I, you, you are totally fine with that music choice, babes. <laughs> we are doing the Musical Secret Shame Hall of Fame right now, where you can just be safe. With your friends, mm. Sharon and Clint. Make a confession. And tell us that song that you don't want anyone to know that you like. Confess to us and by proxy the entire country and just let everybody know, hey, I'm not ashamed and it's something I need to get off my chest. Like Nathan, who's just texts us in saying Enya would be his one. And he said Enya. The, the only problem with her is it's so hard to sing along. He doesn't even know what an Ornoco flow is. I don't know what that is either. Can't help you out with that one. <laughs> uh, someone else said, I, lo- I love One Thing by One Direction. Nickelback are one of my favourite bands, and everyone always cringes when I tell them that. Mm-hmm. And that's come in a few times, Nickelback. Uh, someone else said, my uh, musical hall of shame, my secret shame hall of fame is Guy Williams. I know it's bad. I am ashamed. I apologise. <laughs> 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 uh, Delta Goodrum and the Spice Girls, Aqua. Nothing wrong with Aqua. Nothing wrong with Aqua at all. Uh, other people have said country music. My mummy's play it all the time to us as kids. Annie Lennox. Elvis Presley. Nothing to be worried about that one. And Casey's on the line. What's yours, Casey? Hi. Um, my workplace, I always put on Spotify Westlife, the whole album. Oh, that, that greatest hits. That is a greatest yeah. hits and a half, isn't I it, reckon- Casey? And all the guys at my work love their rock music, so mm-hmm. they just cringe. But I love it. I love them. <laughs> Screw them. You're in charge of the stereo for that part, Casey. It's a great choice. Dylan, what's yours? Um, mine is Ashley Simpson. Wow. Which album? Are we, are we talking like L O L O L O L O V E? It's no, it's her song "Pieces of Me" or "Pieces oh, of Me." Oh, "Piece of Me." Oh, pieces, 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 pieces of, of me. Pieces of me. Dylan paint us a <laughs> Dylan paint us a picture of you right now. How old are you? I'm 22. I'm mouldy. I've got this ugly beard. Um, <laughs> what do you do for a job? I'm an electrician. Really? And the, and on the workplace radio, do you ever chuck on a bit of Ashley Simpson? Uh, I've got it on my Spotify. Wow. Whenever, whenever can, you please, it comes on. can you please sing that to us again? Because I loved how gently you sung some Ashley Simpson. <laughs> it goes this. Oh, seems like I can finally rest my head on something real. I like the way that feels. I think Dylan, you just found your X Factor song to audition with, babe. That was that was. There's people laughing at him, but yeah, that was very very good. I that like was awesome. It, I like it, and we've got Stephen as well. Stephen, what's yours? I uh, um, I like listening to dance music stuff. Yeah. Because um, I, I live in I live in South Auckland, North Tara, and like we generally listen to um, to the R and B like the hardcore stuff. But when I'm all by myself in the car, look on your ninety four point two. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's what we like to hear, Stephen. Did you tune in last week when we um uh, brought back Darude Sandstorm? Yep. How was oh, yeah. how was that for you? Oh man, that brought that brought back memories. Hey man, I was just doing the blue monkey and all everything in the car while I was. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Aaron and Clint, thank you to everybody who has participated today in our, uh, what is it called? The Musical Secret Shame Hall of Fame. Today's Guy Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get grass today from your friendly grass vendor.